cut. Hello everyone. So I have a last name. You can call me Manolis for simplicity. I graduated from Columbia University under the supervision of Michalis Yanakakis and Rocco Servetio, and I am here under FOGI Fellowship. Uh, so today, typically, I, I prefer in meet of the fellows to speak about smooth analysis and beyond work case analysis, that it, it was the area of my thesis. But today I will try to narrate a little bit a story that uh, I worked a lot during the previous years. So my academic interest in one slide, everything mathematically interesting. My, math uh, my academic interest in more details. Uh, I do lots of stuff, like from beyond worst case analysis, game theory, uh, quantum. I love complexity and TFNP stuff. In ML, I have tried a little bit to incorporate the optimization, dynamical systems, uh, and in general, what is happening with the, the equilibrium computation in different models. I'm not doing yet, <laughs> since with lower bounds, but yeah. So today, we'll try to speak about uh, like a, a vision that I had, like creating some theory of optimization about real-world problems. And let's start by looking back to see a little bit ahead. So we can a little bit uh, agree that uh, this is more or less one of the most fundamental problems that we want to tackle, like find a minimizer of uh, an objective function. Typically, the function is non-convex. In some cases, if we are not in a combinatorial optimization problem, we have some lipsiness, uh, some derivative to take. We will use the evaluation and the gradient oracle, and we hope that we can do something. If the function is convex, we can find the minimum. Otherwise, the problem can be really hard. On the other hand, even if the problem is hard, uh, we have enough theory until now that says that, OK, even if they cannot find the global minimum, the local minimum of the problem uh, could suffice for my, could be sufficient for my case, because typically in the majority of the machine learning problems, we have non-spurious local minima. So more or less all of them, they have a similar value. They're not like that. Uh, and we have analyzed very nicely the first order gradient descent. That was my first paper in uh, my PhD career. It was about the zero order model of that. But uh, to be honest, like, is that really so easy, the optimization in practice? And the answer is no, first of all, because what we want to optimize probably it is in different positions. Sometimes we have to protect some of the models of the position of uh, the X variable that we want to optimize. And sometimes uh, what we want to optimize, it does not belong just to one server, just one agent. And that brought more or less the rise of uh, multi-agent learning. What I want to say is that like, you know, 20 years ago, we were trying something that was referred more to a single agent optimization in a very static environment in comparison with what happening today in practice. Like, in my opinion, like games in optimizations, uh, in optimization uh, appear everywhere, like from the markets and the players that they want to, like, uh, uh, they have their own incentives and they're trying to find out their best outcome for them, to biology, like team AI games right now with RoboSoccer and all, all that fascinating stuff. And other times we have games in optimization with an implicit way. Like we want to create a robustification of our model. We want to create a, 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 a defense in an adversarial attack. So just with uh, new questions, new solution concept came. More or less, there are some equilibria in some notion of a game. And together with new solutions came new problems. Like uh, in the past, we were trying just to find the local minimum, and the issue is, let's hope that we will not find the saddle point. 
nowadays there are multiple different uh, hazards that you can that, that you have to tackle but okay one step at a time so the first question that I, I think in optimization and game theory we try to tackle was the case of two players, the, the, the min-max case. Uh, von Neumann said that without solving that problem, we cannot solve everything. And uh, more or less, when the problem is convex concave, uh, when we have two players that they want to maximize uh, their um, utility or minimize their loss and the sum of them is equal to zero, then we can do it nicely. Okay. Uh, but the question is like, is there any broad family of non-convex problems that we can solve them using some standard optimization dynamics? Uh, okay, I can give like, just for a joke, an answer. Yes, we can do like uh, a quasi-convex or quasi-concave. That, that, that was one approach that uh, computer science and optimization had. Let's relax a little bit, but the idea remains that we are in convex concave spaces. And then, it came in my mind the following observation. If you look the PPAD completeness, for example, for min, max, non-convex, non-concave optimization, the landscape is horrible, but you will never see that uh, optimization landscape in practice. In practice, what is happening is something a little bit different. For example, let's take GANs, that was one of the main uh, ideas that uh, reinitiate the min, max optimization. Um, th there is something like a hidden structure. The, the problem is non-convex, non-concave, but the reason is a little bit different. That, that, that is from a tutorial of Goodfellow, who said, look, it's fine all these problems that I see in the um, examples uh, about the convergence to the equilibrium of a model, but in practice, the players, what they are doing is the following. They're represented as deep models, deep neural nets. They are updating in a parameter space, in a different space than the solution space. Uh, where we don't have any convexity. So that comment came in my mind and I started working on that idea that I call it the hidden games. So let me explain it just by the example. My question is the following. Let's assume that we want to play a game that typically is solvable, but let's say that the solution set, the, 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 the strategy space is so large that we cannot really choose. So what we are doing as a policy making, we are using some neural net and we are parameterizing a lower dimensional space and we're trying to find some parameters. That is the, the only thing that we can optimize, the parameters of the neural net and the neural net give us an advice and tell us place this strategy. So in that kind of situation, you have a zero sum game, for example, here, a rock, paper, scissor, but uh, the, the problem is non-convex, non-concave. Why? Because the only thing that you can control is the parameter of the neural net. Uh, and that creates in my mind the idea of hidden games. So the, the whole idea is that you have like a convex structure, but you cannot control uh, directly the, um, uh, the parameters of your strategy. The only thing that you can, let's assume that you have, for mathematics now, let's assume that you have like a neural net that it is smooth, like a, a smooth ReLU, okay? Uh, th th this is the only thing that you have, and you have the parameters of the model that uh, uh, this is the only thing that you can optimize. So, and the other thing is like, typically it is not, uh, a neural net is not invertible to find out the solution with, uh, like find out the solution in the convex problem and let's find out the parameters. So the good news with, with that problem is that, okay, the, we know what is the solution. The solution is like the solution of the hidden game, of the convex concave. The, the question is, how on the earth we can find the theta on P? And like the first thing that we are doing typically in ML is gradient descent. So in um, the, the first thing that we proved actually was that uh, all the cases of different GANs can be modeled un under this framework. And um, after all that, there are also other uh, applications like in biology, uh, let me just state it one more time. The idea is that I have like a bunch of players. They are controlling some parameters. The parameters uh, are feeding in uh, some smooth function. Let's say that it is a neural net. And then we have the losses and the players are trying to optimize their loss. Uh, okay, and now the first thing that we analyzed was the hidden bilinear game, uh, where you, instead of like having X transpose UY, you have that thing. And what we prove is that either you will have cycling phenomena, it is very impressive that we can prove that. 
like the, this is what we call Poincaré recurrence, or you will have some spurious equilibria and some very specific divergent phenomena. Uh, then we started checking what is happening if you have hidden strictly convex concave case. Uh, in some models, we saw that there is something like that as a phenomenon of convergence. So I become stumbled and I say, okay, let's find, uh, in the general case, it again, I can create probably, um, I, I, it is CLS hard the problem. So uh, I can create difficult uh, task, but in which cases I could find a method that will give me a, a nice equilibrium. Uh, so first of all, I want to say that like in a paper that we had, we tried all the famous style stuff like gradient descent, optimistic gradient, extra gradient, optimistic multiplicative weight updates. And we find games that all of these cases are failing. Uh, and then we create a method recently that we call hidden uh, GDA. So the, the whole idea can work about any hidden monotone game. So this is a different kind of generalization of monotone games. If you go to the optimization landscape, they see the monotone games and then they say, ah, let's make it a little bit less uh, in the accuracy of the inequalities. Here, what I say is, I want to solve a monotone game, but I don't control the X parameters. I control only the theta parameters and the X is my neural net. Let's assume that it is smooth. What I can do? And the, 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 the solution that we gave was like a, a method that we call preconditioned hidden gradient method. Uh, more or less is like a, a new uh, uh, understanding of what we call natural gradient. And the main theorem that we gave uh, and I like the intuition that we got from that was the following, that look, um, as long as you have bounded the uh, singular values in the Jacobian of your hidden model, uh, then uh, this preconditioner natural gradient method can find the Nash equilibrium. So a, here is a non-convex landscape, but I can find the equilibrium. Uh, so why I like that a lot? Because uh, because of that remark, like the whole idea is that the neural nets work nicely because they are really uh, expressive the, with a small number of parameters. They can achieve to span the whole uh, the, the whole landscape of uh, the optimization. So the fact that you have a positive singular values means that you have not lost rank in your uh, representation. Now, closing my story. Uh, having that in the pocket, what I would like right now to understand are other interesting questions. Like, first of all, this is like a, the, the, neuro, the natural gradient method, as I understand it from my perspective, it is like a method that it is centralized. So the question is, can we do that with an uncoupled dynamics? Can we parallelize it better? Can we create private methods uh, that they, they will be secure for every player? The other interesting question is like, can I take like some neural net uh, and prove like the smooth an with some smooth analysis with some average analysis this claim that uh, this is this is a claim that there are multiple ML empirical papers that they say that, but can we create a mathematical model that shows with smooth complexity that the rank uh, is good, that the conditional number of the neural nets are good? Uh, what are the application of that? Because the whole idea here is that you are trying to do some policy making. Uh, so the, the question that I have is what are the application in econometrics, in congestion games, and in REM? And just as a last question, uh, like uh, what is the complexity of a hidden game? Like is it PPD complete? Uh, is it CLS complete or something between? Thank you very much. Go back to the definition of a hidden game. Yeah, yeah, yeah of but, course. Um, uh, yeah, here up, uh, here we are. So each player has a loss function. Mm -hmm. uh, the loss function depends on the choices, on the strategies that the players submit. So we have n players. Every player submits some strategy. So th this is the classical utility that I have. Uh -huh. But I don't control the uh, the he one, uh, the chi one, chi n, I control only the parameters that will give some outcome.
So these are not convex functions. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the x i's can be smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the problem is yeah, like yeah. a composition of mm -hmm. convex uh, things that they give a convex thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And like, given that they have you here, um, one smooth complex the question is like, can you show somehow that uh, the, um, in, in general the Jacobian of uh, models that we see in practice uh, uh, has good uh -huh. uh, conditional number. So for uh, this model, you want to prove that the Jacobian is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because that would permit the for the method that we have uh, to have good convergence guarantees for the... So at the local optimum. At the... Okay. No, that, that, that is even more amazing. At the Nash equilibrium, at ah. the exact Nash ah, equilibrium. Uh, yes. Is there a condition on the on the uh, on the actual game that tells you when is it a hidden game? With no, no, that, that is an amazing question. Okay, so le let me repeat the question. Uh, I, I will phrase it with a very TCS perspective. Is there a, an algorithm that I will give you a game and you can find out if it is hidden or not? I'm not sure. Probably it would be incomplete or even something more than this, but this is an interesting question. This is a very interesting question. That's why it's hidden, I guess. <laughs> no, but yeah, the question is in character, right? Ah, you're saying... Uh, like, yeah. besides the definition, I don't know, like, a, but it would be interesting to find, like, a process that uh, looks a mathematical formula, for example, and uh, find out the, if it is yes or no. Great. Well, thanks. Thank you very much. Okay.